Uh, thank you very much for the interesting uh, uh, presentation. Um, I have a question about the complexity of supply chains now and how many chemicals uh, are being produced every year, like uh, the explosion of innovat innovation in these uh, industries are huge. And I, I was thinking how costly and even like uh, how uh, long it takes for a company like uh, Monsanto, Corteva to register a, a new product, like a new chemical in the EU. Uh, it's prohibitive. Uh, how, how does it work? I, I, I don't understand so much about it. Okay. Um, yeah. May I? Yeah, uh, sure. Two questions. One, w the first one now with a different uh, environmental, uh, the uh, agricultural ministry in, in Germany with mm -hmm. the Greens. Do you think there is a hope with uh, glyphosate in the, in the future and how, how is that looking? And mm -hmm. perhaps one, one question somewhat of a tangent and I don't know. I was just wondering whether you've been thinking about this also kind of linked to degrowth thinking because yeah. it's actually... These, these points, these pollution issues are really key and it's kind of, for me, it's because of this growth imperative that we're trying to, well, use 100 times more glyphosate <laughs> for, uh, because it doesn't work anymore, but we're still wanting to get more out of it. So, yeah, that's yeah. my two questions. Um, I was just interested on uh, if there's any potential for this kind of industry to move towards this new idea of like a circular economy. So on the one hand, how can we, is there like a possibility to recycle them once we use them? Or on the other hand, is there any like wastage products that we can get those kind of chemicals out of? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, these are all great questions. So um, the cost, I don't, uh, uh, so the number of substances, it's difficult to say, we don't know. Uh, but uh, there are lots of innovations, and especially with nanomaterials, for instance, there are new substances. But, uh, and there are several types of regulation within the EU. You have uh, the sectoral regulation like pesticides, drugs, biocides, veterinary drugs, cosmetics, and you have uh, the general uh, reach regulations which deal with all the, the other chemicals. Uh, uh, so, uh, so uh, the cost, I don't know how it, co it, co it is a lot of money, but it, uh, it depends on the regulations and it depends also for which on the level uh, of, uh, of, I mean, the level of toxicity of your products because you do not have to provide the same, uh, the same type of data according to the level, uh, the expected, uh, the level of toxicity and the type of toxicity. So it's quite, a, it's quite a problem. The other prob uh, so I don't know, but the other problem is one, it is uh, you p the, this, uh, this regulatory agency, they works with uh, the taxes and uh, the fees that the companies pay. And for instance, for the rich regulations, uh, once it's registered, uh, then the, the source of money uh, dries as well. So it's, it's, an it's another type of problems. So I don't, I don't know, but uh, cl uh, cl uh, I don't know, but clearly, uh, it's it's if you if you expecting to make a lot of money, even if it's lots of money, you have to pay for you uh, you will pay for this money, and you will, and anyway, you have lots of people working within the EU. Really, it's uh, thousands of people working for industries within the EU whose work is to make uh, sure that the uh, that the, 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 the application goes through in a way or another. And you, if, as a company, sometimes, uh, and for pesticides, it's very true, they disappeared, they are not authorized anymore. It's not because they have been banned. It's because the company decided uh, it, w it was not worth economically to submit, to resubmit an application because it has to be renewed every 10 years. So there are many ways to go around, but if you read French, please look, have a look at the book uh, from uh, Henri Boulier. The second point for glyphosate, I don't know, because all the political 
in other countries, the uh, also uh, the government has changed. And uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure that the French government will uh, vote uh, for the ban, uh, whereas uh, three years ago it did work, uh, vote for the ban. So now I'm not sure we, uh, what will happen, and I'm not sure. And I also agree that this is a question of degrowth. Of, I mean, as as a scholar, I can, so as a person, I think we need to, if uh, it's not only for the toxicity, for climate change, for biodiversity, every, all these issues which are uh, dependent from one another, it's a question of degrowth, clearly. But uh, this is certainly not the, um, certainly the, not the way we are taking now. And the, the big problem is now that we as a uh, European country, we can't say degrowth, but there are many countries which haven't growth yet, uh, have their growth. And it's a quite um, unfair situation. So, well, okay, you're asking to, to us not to, to industrialize, but yes, you, you have been your industrialization periods, and et cetera, et cetera. So there are many things at stake which are not so easy. And the circular economy question, this is a great question, because now if you go into all the international agencies, the global agencies, EU, OECD, World Bank, blah, 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 the, 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 the report on all these questions have changed in the last few years, really. Uh, from the, if you're looking at, the, uh, for, for example, there is something which is called the chemical, the global chemical outlooks, which is uh, which are the first as was produced, I think, in 2012, and you had several other, and the most recent one, they uh, and they are produced by many international organizations, programs, or whatever. The, this idea of circular economy was not present in the early uh, in 2012, and now it's everywhere. This is really the idea that you will take the waste, and that it's a new urban mining that you will, and we will use the the component in there. But it works partly. But where you where uh, where uh, first? It's only partly because the, you can't recycle everything. Uh, uh, still, when you recycle, you are pro you're producing waste. If you want to do it safely, it's really expensive. So what you're doing, you're sending the waste in Africa or in South Asia. And uh, what I was explaining, and effectively, you, we have a, there is a trade on raw material like, uh, I don't know, titan, uh, cobalt, uh, um, or, uh, sorry, uh, copper, etc., from this waste. But I uh, just go to, to there are uh, documentaries on Ghana, what is happening in Ghana. I, I saw it, it's just awful. Of, of, I mean, I mean uh, with, uh, it's, 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 it's a nightmare, but there are other places. So it's, uh, there is a lot of, and there are money is put in to develop this, uh, this type of economy in place, uh, to, in fact, to, to delocalize this polluting uh, 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 waste, uh, recycling waste economy in places where you won't see it uh, here in Europe and you, or in the US, and you can benefit from it. So, like uh, in the in the 70s and in the 80s, uh, there there were many uh, polluting industries which were moved uh, to uh, to other countries in Asia, uh, in South America, in uh, East uh, East Europe, uh, uh, or I don't know in Turkey, North Af America, for instance, the textile industries, which is the really poll polluting industries, and it's now happening as well with this new idea of circular economy. It's very nice on the paper. And you have a lot of very nice uh, schemes and etc. But you need to, to look to really precisely on how it is implemented. And, in, 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 and uh, where, is the, where are the most polluting parts done and in which conditions? And what it would cost to do it uh, to do it not so in a not so polluting way. And, there is, and it's, it's very material. There are things you can't reuse and which are very toxic and can't be destroyed, even if you burn them, uh, I don't know, uh, um, um, uh, metals can't be destroyed. So for an arsenic, I don't, for instance, uh, you use a lot of arsenic in the chemical industry, it just can't be destroyed. When you have extracted from the, uh, from the rock, it's there and it's toxic and it can pollute uh, everywhere.